Well, good morning, Jerry Rowe. Good morning. All right, these are our announcements for today. Uh, today at 1.30, we will have a door choir rehearsal. On Tuesday, we have men's prayer group at 11 a.m. Following our brown bag Bible study at 12.15 p.m. And then we have the national night out from 4 to 6 p.m. Please come by the church to meet with our community. Hot dogs will be served on this evening. On Wednesday um, at 10.45 a.m., please join us at the church to travel together to the University of Memphis to feed the students. We need you to help serve the food to approximately 175 students. There is no cooking involved, just serving and visiting with the University of Memphis students. Many are probably far from home and would love to see a smiling face. Uh, the band will leave at 11 a.m. Please call the church office if you want to go. Then we have our midweek encouragement that is released online at approximately 12 uh, p.m. And also on Wednesday we have Bible study that meets at 5.30 p.m. Then on Friday, we have our movie night, which is open to everyone. I would love to see you guys come. We'll be watching the movie Overcomer um, this Friday night. It's going to be great. Then on Saturday, we have our basketball ministry, which meets from 10 to 4. Also on Saturday, we have our noon prayer. Amen. We had a great homecoming with 85 people in attendance. Come on, let's there was wonderful fellowship and food, and we are looking forward to next year. Be sure to pick up a Samaritan's Purse brochure today for suggestions on filling a shoebox for children at Christmas time. Check your challenger for details. Last day to drop off your shoebox is November the 6th. Amen. And do forgive me, I have forgot that there was no prelude. And so please forgive me. All right. To the Lord in prayer. Oh, yes, a report on my service. So today, we have five people to be baptized in the East Memphis Community Church service. And uh, we still have some people that are meeting in the New Fellowship Hall, um, some of Jeff and Jody's family that are still back there. It was such a grand, grand celebration of what God had done. Two of them had not been baptized, and Brother Jeff and Jody, as well as Sister Heather wanted to rededicate their lives to the Lord. And so it was a phenomenal, phenomenal service. And then so God is moving. Amen. Amen. We had 50 in attendance. Amen. So, amen. The Lord is moving. God is moving. Amen. God is doing many great things. Keep on praying for us as we're trying to transform the community with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so very much for who you are. We thank you for your gift of your son, Jesus. God, we do pray that your spirit will be felt mightily in this service as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Been a good day so far? Yeah. There we go. All right. Y'all stand with me and let's sing... Uh, so praise to God. Let's start with love lifted me.
Um, the next song we sing is God of Grace and God of Glory. Um, grace, something all of us need. Amen. Yeah.
Amen. If our fellows would come forward and receive our offering now, please. That'll be great. That will be wonderful. Thank you. Good deal. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the privilege of being here in your house this morning. Lord, we thank you for uh, what you did in, uh, in our first church service. We thank you for what you're going to do in our third church service. And God, we just want to praise you right now in advance for what you're going to do in this service right here. Thank you for the privilege of giving back to you part of what you've given to us. And God, we just ask that you would bless everyone who gives, bless the gifts they give, and may our church churches continue to be a lighthouse for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Stand with me, if you will, for the reading of Scripture. Our Scripture reading will be coming from Luke, the 6th chapter, verses 27 through 35. I'll be reading from the New International Version. All together. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on the cheek cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Amen. 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 What a great worship time. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. No teaching from Jesus has ever been more attacked, more slandered, more ridiculed, and more berated than Jesus calling on his people to love those who hate them. Love those who strike them on the cheek and turn the other cheek to be struck. To go the second mile with our oppressors. To give our shirt to somebody who's stealing our coat. Love your enemies. And yet, this may be the most amazing, revolutionary world-saving principle ever that Jesus has given us. As we read together there in, in Luke chapter 6, this is, this is Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? And so Jesus, uh, Jesus was teaching here and, and sharing with us some really, really tough principles to follow. But he starts off there in verse 27 answering three really important questions. All right? Answering three important questions for us for understanding. The first question, Lord, is this teaching for everyone? Nope. Nope. It's not for everyone. He said, I say to those who hear me, not everybody hears spiritual truth. Not everybody gets spiritual truth, right? And so uh, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he said the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. They're foolishness to him. Love your enemy sounds like foolishness until we meet Jesus. Second question. Lord, what do you mean by my enemies? Who are my enemies? Good questions. Simple answer. Our enemies are those who hate us, 
threaten us, curse us, hit us, take what's ours. A lot of times it's not so much that we make people our enemies as it is that they classify themselves by the actions they make toward us, the actions they take toward us. And yet Jesus says to love these enemies. Third question. Lord, how can I love these people? I don't even like them. I don't even like How can I love them? The answer, Jesus never commanded us to like them. He never commanded us to like them. He commanded us over and over to love them, but there's a world of difference between liking somebody and loving somebody. Okay? Probably, realistically, honestly, there's some folks in the world that Jesus doesn't like because of the way they act. <clears throat> Excuse me. The way we act. Right. Let me raise my hand. Let me raise my hand, okay? There are times that, and I am ashamed to say it, but I want to be honest with you. There are times that I say things, I think things, I do things that are the farthest thing from being a Christian that anybody could do. As far away from being a pastor as anybody could be. But you know what? My Jesus loves me. And if that isn't love, what is? Right? Thank you for that phenomenal medley. Love me. And because Jesus loves me, Scripture says that, that before I trusted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I was his enemy. I was his enemy. And yet Jesus went to the cross for me as his enemy. And he shed his blood for me, his enemy enemy and he did the same thing for every one of us the same thing for every one of us in scripture love is never identified as an emotion love is always an action I can love people without liking them I love them enough that I want them to get saved. I don't like them enough that I want to go to lunch with them. Okay? You see the difference? Don't shake your head at me. You do the same thing. <laughs> we all feel that way. We all have people that we're, we're closer to than other people. I can be friends with that guy. I don't think I can be friends with that one. I love him, but I don't, I don't want to go to lunch with him. Okay? Right. Jesus commanded, him to, commanded us to love people. And we can love them without liking. Love is something we do. So when the Lord commanded us to love our enemies, he gave us four specific actions to prove that we love people. He says that we're to do good things for our enemies. Do good things for our enemies. He said we're to bless our enemies, to say good things to them. We're to pray for our enemies. Pray for God to do his will in their lives and through their lives. Don't do it right now because I'll lose you in the sermon. But after lunch, after lunch, think back over some of the enemies that you've had in your life and ask God, 
What did I learn from that guy? What did I learn from that gal? And I think you'll be amazed at what God taught you through your enemies. It's amazing when we look back how God worked through someone that we didn't love, we didn't even like, but they taught us spiritual things. If nothing else, they taught us what not to do. But I promise you, if you'll, go, if you'll, if you'll do that little exercise, you'll be thanking God at the end of it for the things that you learned from some of your enemies. We're to give to our enemies. We're to give to our enemies because that confuses them. It confuses them. These are the four basic acts of love. This is what we do to our kids. This is what we do to our grandkids. And of course we do more. But if we can just do these four simple things to people that we consider our enemies or they consider us their enemy, sometimes it's just that direction, isn't it? That, you know, the guy that lives across the fence, the guy that lives across the street, you know, the ones that dump their trash over in your yard, All right. throw, their, throw their empty bottles, empty cans over in your yard for you to pick up. If we'll do those things, to those people, God will bless us. These are the things that God had in mind. These four, four actions. And these four actions are, are world changing. World changing. And it's even more than that. When we do loving things for our enemies, at least 12 things happen. Now, I normally have three points or four points. I've got 12 this morning. Buckle your seatbelt. <laughs> We're going through quickly. We're going through quickly. I promise you. You're not going to feel like you've been through a 12-point sermon. When we do good to our enemies, when we love our enemies, when we bless our enemies, pray for our enemies, give to our enemies, first of all, God is honored. God is honored because we're following His lead. He is the Lord of our life. He's the boss of our life. He deserves for us to follow his leading. Second point, Jesus is pleased. Jesus is pleased. He's the great shepherd. We're, our, we're his sheep. When we follow his example, his attitudes, his actions, Jesus is pleased. Third point, the Holy Spirit uses our actions to accomplish His will. That's because, once again, He's our Lord. He's our boss. We're His employees. We're His servants. And God wants to work through our lives into the lives of other people. And it's only when we yield to His leading and obey His leading that we're doing that. Number four, the devil is infuriated. The devil gets madder than snot. I, I wasn't going to say that in church, Debbie. I apologize. It slipped out. The devil gets so mad he can spit. That's better. The devil gets mad because... We're not playing according to his rules. We're not playing according to his rules. He wants us to yell back. He wants us to hit back. He wants us to hurt back. And that's not loving. That's not loving. It's not like Jesus. Point five. The enemies. Our enemies. Those who've done the bad things to us are puzzled. Because they're fully expecting us to do unto them what they've done unto us. Right? You know, we, we learned the golden rule 
when we were in three-year-olds or four-year-olds, right? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's verse 31. Are you listening to the context in which Jesus gave the golden rule? It's in loving our enemies. I never realized that. I'd always pull that verse just out of context, preached on that verse, taught on that verse, tried to, tried to cram that verse down kids' mouths, you know, and, ah, come on. Would you want other people to treat you like that? No, you wouldn't. But look at the context. It's in the context of loving our enemies. Yes. <laughs> wow. I never realized that before I was preparing for this message. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing how much light Scripture sheds on Scripture when you don't mess with the commentaries. Amen. Right? Amen. <laughs> oh, my soul and body. Our enemies expect us to do to them what they've done to us. And when we don't do that, they're puzzled. What? You've always acted that way. How come you didn't get mad this time? How, you, how come you didn't throw my garbage back over the fence? Because Jesus has touched my heart. And I want you to know that despite of everything we've said back and forth across this fence or from driveway to driveway or wherever, in spite of all that, God has convinced me it's my job to love you. Yes. And I'm trying. Sometimes you are too. But I'm trying. Check me out and see how I do. You talk about an accountability partner. You just got one for keeps. Our enemies are be puzzled. Sixth point. The critics of the church will be silenced. They're prepared to watch us react to the bad guy with evil deeds, evil words. And trust me, those are the sound bites, those are the film clips that make the 6 o'clock news. And they say, oh yeah, look how these Christians are, are reacting. Look how these Christians are reacting. But when we respond instead of react, when we turn the other cheek, when we talk like Jesus talks instead of the way we want to talk, world begins to see Jesus. And Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. I'll draw all men to me. Oh, folks. You see, you see, this is not just some pie in the sky by and by. This, no, this, this thing fits tennis shoes and flip-flops and work boots. This loving our enemies when they see us doing loving things to hateful people, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to respond. Point seven, the church itself is blessed because we're being obedient as a church. We're being obedient as a church. Number eight, Christians who are going through hard times see our behavior, and they're inspired to do the same type of thing. Whoa, I didn't know you could actually do that. I've never seen anybody respond like that. I can do that. I can do that. And somebody may see you doing that, and you think, nobody saw me. And then weeks later, somebody may come up to you, slip their hand on, around your shoulder and say, hey, listen. You don't know it, but I saw you the other day, a couple of weeks ago. I heard you the, a couple of weeks ago. I heard how you responded instead of reacting. That blessed my heart, challenged my heart. And I want you to know, I've been doing better on that. And it's because I saw you doing it. 
How biblical is that? How biblical is that? Oh, this, this works, folks. Outsiders, outsiders to the church, non-Christians, non-attenders are drawn to Jesus because they finally see somebody acting like Jesus acted. And they say, whoa, we didn't know those people existed anymore. And that can be you and me. That can be you and me. <clears throat> Number 10. We as church members are blessed. Okay? We as church members are blessed, again, through obedience. So the church is, as a whole is blessed. We as individuals are blessed. Number 11. Oh, folks, this one's huge. This one is huge. When we do good to our enemies, when we bless our enemies, when we pray for our enemies, when we give to our enemies, our anger goes away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ha! Preacher, whoa, time out. What do you mean our anger goes away? You can't hate someone you pray for. Amen. You can't hate somebody you pray for. Because the Jesus in you loves what part of Jesus is in them already. And as the Jesus in you lifts up the Jesus in you, the Jesus in them is drawn to the Jesus in you. And they learn to love Jesus as well. Amen. All my brothers and sisters, how practical, how practical this is. Our anger goes away. And in verse 35, the last verse that we read, our reward in heaven is great. Amen. Our reward in heaven is great. Nothing you and I do in this life is more important than showing the love of Jesus to people who get on our nerves, People who harass us. People who make fun of us, persecute us for our faith. And make life miserable for us. Who needs Jesus more than those people? There's not many. Now the psychologist will tell you, hurting people hurt people. Right? Right? Hurting people hurt people because they're hurting. They're miserable. They can't help hurting other people. And the other saying, misery loves company. Well, if I'm miserable, I sure want you to be miserable too. I want somebody to feel the pain that I'm feeling. And you know, when we begin to love people, we feel their pain. We can identify with their pain. We learn to pray for their pain. We learn to do what we can to, to ease their pain. And what are we doing? We're treating others like we want to be treated. That comes real close to loving. That comes real close to loving. Doing good for other people, blessing other people, praying for other people, giving to other people that we don't like is not natural. It's not natural. It's supernatural. Only Jesus can do that through us. Only the Holy Spirit, as we obey His leadership, as we obey His leading, as we obey his guiding, that's the only way we can do these things. And not every Christian will do that. Not every Christian will do that. There are a lot of Christians who, well, at least people who call themselves Christians, don't do good for other people. They don't pray for other people. They don't give to other people. They don't bless other people. Only godly, faithful, 
Christian people will do these things. <coughs> and so, kind of like the enemy creating its own self, right? By the way that they, they classify themselves as your, their, as your enemy because of the way they treat you. Nobody has to look at you and judge. Are you a godly Christian? You classify yourself by the way you treat other people. All right? We classify ourselves. The rest of the people will react with lawsuits, attacks of their own, slander of their own, retaliation of their own, none of which come from Jesus. None of which come from Jesus. Jesus understood this. He said in verse 31, He said, if you only love those who love you, where's the power in that? Even lost people do that. Verse 32, uh, verse 33, excuse me. If you only do good to those who do good to you, where's the power in that? Lost people do that every day. Verse 34, if you only give to those who you know can pay you back, what good is that? Lost people do that too. How can they see Jesus? we act that way. But if we're true followers of Jesus, we're not going to be allowed to retaliate. Well, allowed? What, what do you mean? I've retaliated plenty of times. That's I with my hand up, okay? That's I with my hand up. But you see, every time I have a, a, a thought Every time I have this plan to retaliate, because you know, it doesn't take but just a few seconds for that plan to come together in our minds, does it? I mean, it's, it's almost instantaneous. It's uncanny how quickly I can react. And yet the Holy Spirit, all of those seconds that I'm running through this new plan, they'll never do this again. They'll, they'll rue the day they messed with me. I, all the time, the Holy Spirit is whispering in my ear, speaking down in my heart, you don't want to go there. Nah, that's not like Christ. That's not loving. Would Jesus do that? If you would just be quiet, I would have a great time Getting even! But the Holy Spirit is given to us. What a wonderful gift. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can resist those temptations. We'll love our enemies. We'll do good to them. We'll say good things about them. We'll give good things to them. Why? Because the Jesus in us will help us do those things. If we'll do those things, the world will change. Our enemies will change. We've got God's word on it. We've got God's word on it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our application today is real simple to say. Let's love our enemies with God's love. Let's love our enemies with God's love. It's easy to say, but it's a lot tougher to carry out. Amen. A lot tougher. We've all experienced it. I'm going to lose 10 pounds, which is real easy to say, but it's a lot harder when you realize I've got to give up that second dessert or the third and fourth ones. All right. right? I'm going to read my Bible more. Easy to say, but then we realize I've got to get up earlier. I don't have time in my day if I don't get up earlier. I'm going to pray more. 
I'm going to pray more. Easy to say until you try to pray at bedtime and the sandman is beating you with these sackfuls of sand. But hey, we've got to start somewhere, right? Why not, why not right where we are? It doesn't matter where we are. There's never a better place to start than right where we are. We've got to start sometime. How about right now? There's not any better time to obey what God's told us to do. My prayer has been, as I'm prepared, as I've preached, God, let them hear law. Don't let them hear anger. Don't let them hear judgment. Don't let them hear... I love you. I love you enough that I want to see you have living a joyful life in Jesus. And one of the biggest ways is loving our enemies. Why? Two reasons. Because our, en our enemies need Jesus. People need the Lord. Even people who are not our enemies will see us acting like Jesus and be drawn to Him. Miss Katrina is going to Lead us in a hymn of invitation. People need the Lord. Pastor Ronnie and I are here at the front. If we can pray with you, if we can pray for you. Sunday after the service was over and Miss Katrina told me don't on me I've been leading music for all these months for over a year I've never joined and so she's coming this morning <laughs> as our sister in Christ as our sister here at Cherry Road and we'll take those smiles and that applause as, as approval. Amen. So I want you to come by after our prayer. Amen. Hug her neck. Tell her you love her. She's not your enemy. You can love her. <laughs> and my prayer is that God will work in your life and through your life. This Amen. Week. Oh, Father, how we love you. How grateful we are for your love for us. Lord, you've told us some real simple things to do. You told us this morning a really tough thing to do. But God, you wouldn't have told us to do it if, 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 if you didn't give us the power to do it. And so use us this week, Father, to show other people Jesus in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.